Hey everybody, welcome to The Sim Hangar. My name's Mark, thank you very much for watching. And we're back with Wired to Fire. Now in my previous video, we had a look at what sort of components you could use in a flight sim PC. And the whole focus of that video was not really about the specification as much as what sort of considerations we should take into account, what sort of components we should consider when we're building a PC for flight sim, which generally tends to be very demanding. And this video is a direct follow on because that PC that we put together, well, today I'm here with Dan from Wired to Fire once again. In fact, I'm here at Wired to Fire's premises in Dorking in the UK, and we're going to be assembling all the various bits and pieces and it's going to be an i7-13700K processor. Dan, thank you very much for ha having no me. And, uh, Lovely to meet you. And Dan is going to show us, uh, with his great expertise, exactly the main points of how to assemble a PC. Now, obviously, from a time point of view, we're not going to be able to go through every single tiny issue, but we are going to cover and comment on all the major aspects and considerations that you should have if you wanted to put your own PC together or perhaps you just wanted to know a little bit more about it. So, without further ado, let's get on with it, Dan. Let's do it. Normally, I would start by putting everything onto the motherboard, installing all the RAM, CPU and uh, storage. But in this case, as per our last video, um, we are gonna make sure that all of the components, like your graphics card, and the cooler, the two most important things that are most likely to not fit in the case are gonna fit. So I've already done that. So now we move on to the next step, which is gonna be populating the motherboard uh, with all of the components that belong in that. So we're gonna start off with the CPU, which we've got here. Um, so what you wanna do is pop that out of its little anti-static uh, box, like so. Grab it in your hands and what you want to do is lift this little latch up here on the CPU um, socket and that will release the, um, the socket. Um, then you want to pull this back, just being very careful of these pins um, as they're very delicate. Uh, and then what you want to do is there's two little notches that you just want to line up on the CPU and then just gently drop it in. It should require no force and just give it a little wiggle to make sure it's seated properly. Close down the, uh, the top piece. You may need to just pop off the plastic, it will come off by itself. And then push down the lever and hook it back under the retention arm. Uh, your little protective cover will pop off and obviously you've got the box, so you can put those to one side. Next thing that we'll do is the RAM, which I've got here. So you just want to pop that out of its box as well. Dan, just remind us, what RAM is it? So this is 32 gigabytes of 6,000 megahertz DDR5. Um, now, depending on your motherboard, these will want to go in a specific slot. On my one, it's actually marked that it goes into the DIMM A2 and B2, which is the two gray ones. Um, it's often the same for pretty much every manufacturer. So those are two 16 gig? These are both 16 gig sets, uh, 16 per, per DIMM here. And the speed den, just remind us. These are 6,000 megahertz or okay. mega transfers. So pretty fast memory. Pretty fast, about as fast as I would comfortably go at the moment for stability reasons. Uh, then what you want to do is they've got a notch in them, the, the, uh, the RAM sticks. You want to line those up with the notch on the board and then line them up into the gray slots on this board and then just push down until you hear a click. And then you want to do the same again. So line up the slot with the stick and then just push down until you hear a click. And that's all done. All right, next thing is your solid state drive, which we mentioned is vital these days. Uh, this is behind a sort of little heat shield. So a solid state drive is effectively a hard drive. Yes. That's yeah. what we're going yes. to store information yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, it's a hard drive. It's got no moving pieces. So what you want to do with that is, you've got that here just to the side, you want to grab that. And that's a one terabyte, this is a This is a one terabyte uh, solid state MVME drive, so pretty good. So you want to line that up into the slot, 
push it down and then you'll have the heat shield which you'll just want to make sure you remove the plastic off of the off of the little thermal pad just to help keep it cool which is a bit fiddly line it up on one end and then line up the other end as well i've seen that some mvm um drives that you can buy dan come with their own uh yeah some he come with heat, heat sink cooler or or something of that nature yeah so some of the really high-end pci 5.0 drives do can get quite warm so they do come with their own heat sink coolers and if that is the case then you just leave this one off and then you would screw the ssd directly into the motherboard rather than using the um, heat sink as its retention method but now we've done all of that the motherboard is ready to now go into the chassis so we'll move on to that part next so now that we've installed everything onto the motherboard you want to get your case and you want to remove all your side panels off of it um, so that you have the best access to the case uh, while you're installing everything into it at this point, I just want to mention that obviously we are building on an anti-static work mat. So if you're doing this at home, just want to make sure that you're being careful if you're on carpet, as you don't want to be building up any static and then touching any components. Um, good way to discharge yourself at this point is just to touch the metal chassis of the case. Uh, once you've got your case, as I said, uh, you want to grab your accessory pack, which will come with all of the screws that you'll need for the build. Uh, you want to get one of them, them to one side. You'll also want to grab your IO shield. Now this gets installed in the back here and is used to protect the IO on the back of the motherboard. You don't want to forget putting that in because it means you have to take the motherboard out. So now that we've done that, you just want to quickly check you've got all your standoffs in. These are for attaching the uh, motherboard to the case so once you've checked that line that up down here with the slot for it and it just pops in pop that in lower the motherboard in carefully making sure you line up all of the IO at the back and then lining up the middle center peg now this can sometimes be a little bit fiddly but once you've dropped that in, it should sit in there nicely. Do, Dan, do all motherboards have a centre peg? Not all cases will have this centre peg for the um, standoffs, but most of them will now. But if it doesn't have that, what I suggest doing is lining them all up, get the middle, a screw for the middle one to hand, just holding it in place and then just screwing that middle one in and then from there if you just leave it a little bit loose you can line all the other ones up nicely around that middle one. Once you've affixed this in you'll want to grab your cooler's back plate and then also attach that through the hole, the mounting points here so that you're ready to attach your cooler um, while everything's nice and clear and you can access the back of the PC easily before you've ran any cables or anything like that. On this case Dan that's not necessary is it? It's just on this case we'll attach it once we put the power supply in and everything like that because it's there's plenty of access around the the, the rear there's a nice big cutout um behind the behind the motherboard uh, and the cpu socket so we can do that later on in this case but it's always worth just having a look to make sure you've got if you've got that cut out then you can leave it later if you don't then you can install that at an earlier point if you want to it just depends on the building the tooling required for a PC build isn't complicated. Recommended is a long-reach screwdriver, which is magnetic so you don't drop those screws into awkward places, and of course some cable ties to assist with your cable management. One of the really important things when building your PC is make sure you've got the right tooling. Dan, I'm ready for assembly! Now we've installed the motherboard into the case, we're going to want to install all the relevant connections. Uh, for the case. Um, normally we pass these through the back here or through the bottom to connect into the relevant places but we've got things like the HD audio for your front panel audio, we've got your front panel buttons which looks very similar but is labelled differently, uh, we've got your USB 3.0, we've got your USB-C uh, connection if you can see that here as well. Um, and then obviously any fans that are already installed in the chassis, you want to install those into the relevant places. Dan, 
Where do they actually connect to on the motherboard? So depending on which motherboard you've got, they can vary slightly, but most things um, are along the bottom edge along here, and then your USBs are typically up the right-hand side. Um, so you've got your USB 3, USB-C, front panel, various different locations for fans uh, along the bottom, and then your audio, front panel audio, is just down the bottom there as well. Now we've got all of that connected up, the next thing we're going to do is install our power supply here. Um, now this is obviously a modular ATX 3.01, one, which means we have the nice 12 volt high power cable. Now obviously we're only using a 4070 Ti, but this means that you can have up to um, 600 watts through the one single cable. As you can see, it's very high duty um, and high quality. So, so Dan, if we upgraded the graph GPU at any time, that cable's good enough all the way up to a 4090? This cable will handle any graphics card currently available at the moment. Um, another nice thing about these is that you've got all the connections here. Um, and you can't really put them in the wrong place. They're all labeled and they are all different connections for the different parts. So you can't put the wrong cable in the wrong thing. So that's not something you've got to worry about. You've got SATA for your hard drives and SSDs. You've got your motherboard uh, 24 pin, your CPU and your PCIe. Um, so that's graphics cards. Now we've not tidied up any of the cables yet as we're still assembling and things could change. But what we're going to want to do now is get our power supply, obviously remove the little sticker off of it. Then you're going to want to line it up, fan facing the ground. Just slip that in the back here. Line it up with the back and then attach the four screws around the back to hold it in. Now I've installed the power supply and done some cable management around the back to neaten things up. We're going to move on to the cooler. Now this is very important because it's what calls your CPU. Uh, and if your CPU is running too hot, you'll start having issues with throttling, stuttering and stuff like that in, in your games and flight simulation. Um, now, you could get away with a 240 mil cooler for the i7. Um, we've gone through a 360 just to be sure. But if you go for anything more than an i7, then it is an absolute necessity to have a 360 mil um, cooler. Now, this we're going to install using the back plate here, which is what is used to affix the cooler to the CPU. Now, that's attached on the rear, as I mentioned earlier, and screwed down. And then also, you're going to want to be screwing in your fans to the, uh, onto the radiator. And then this can be either installed in the front, but in our case, um, we're actually going to put it in the top. Now, this obviously depends very much so on which chassis you have, but we're going to go for it exhausting hot air out of the top. Okay, Dan, I see that we've uh, assembled the fan, fans onto the cooler and that's installed now. So the next step is to get this onto the CPU. Yep. Now, a lot of discussion about the best way to apply a thermal paste to a CPU. What's your view? So personally, uh, for us, it's more, most important that you, one, don't put too much on or too little. So for us, we like to either use a small sort of pea-sized dot right in the middle of the processor or a little cross that covers um, the whole thing like that. But you just have to be careful not to put too much or, more importantly, too little uh, on there because you want to make sure that it is got a good uh, connection um, between or interface between the cooler and the CPU itself. So I'm just going to apply ours now. I'm going to go for a small cross on this one. Uh, so you want to put about that much, should be plenty. Uh, some people like to spread it out, but personally, I don't see the need for doing that. Um, the pressure of mounting the cool plate on it here will uh, make that spread out nicely so one thing you also want to remember to do is to remove any stickers or labels off of the bottom of this because otherwise it won't cool properly I want to pull that off and that's a copper plate is it yeah this is a copper cooling plate or cold plate I think they call them uh, and then what you want to do is 
turn this around. Now, lucky with this one, it doesn't matter which way the logo goes because it spins, but on, you may want to take notice of that when you build it yourself. You want to line it up like so to make sure it's over all the screws. And then just first of all, in a cross pattern, just to make sure you don't put any, uh, any un uneven pressure on the CPU, attach the, the thumb screws to hold it down. <laughs> Right, now we've attached on the CPU and we've connected all the cables and that's all ready to go. We're now on to the final part, which is going to be installing the GPU here. Now, I've already taken off the PCI covers to fit in our 4070 Ti here. So it's quite a simple procedure. Just make sure you move any cables out of the way. Line it up with this metal slot here. You shouldn't have to worry much about the... Uh, about the plastic clip here on installation but you just need to line that up and then just push down and you should hear a gentle a little small click um, then you'll want to get your two screws which hold it to the chassis and I'll screw those in then the, probably the most important part just double check that's all in properly yep yeah. and then your most important part is connecting this cable up you want to make sure you have the little top piece here lined up with the top piece like that line it all up nicely and just make sure you push that in all the way to make sure that that is connected properly and you don't have any issues and that's it we're all done um, the only other thing to mention is obviously this clip here if you're ever needing to remove the GPU you'll need to obviously take the screws out and then push that down but that's going to be in there nice and tight so what's left then hardware wise are we done in terms of the hardware, yep, yeah, we're all done now. Just need to set up the BIOS and install Windows. So now we've added the final part, the graphics card, and the entire system is all put together. We can now go on to the last few steps now that we are in the BIOS. So that's going to be updating the BIOS to the newest version. Now that can be done in many different ways. Um, for Asus, you'd use the Easy Update utility. Once you've done that, you want to let it boot back up into the BIOS and then you're going to want to enable your XMP on your memory so that it runs at its full speed. Now, by default, your RAM will often run at slower um, than the rated speed that you purchase. So in this case, it says it's 4,800 megahertz, uh, but this is a 6,000 megahertz kit. So you have to enable your XMP profile and that will let it run at the full speed. Once you've done that, it's as simple as installing Windows, getting all your drivers on there, and you're away. You're up in the skies. Thanks, Dan, very much for taking us through that. Again, we've only been able to touch on uh, all the basics, if you like, of putting it together um, to give any of you that are keen on assembling a PC some idea of what's involved. And of course, building your own PC is not everybody's cup of tea. But many PC suppliers, including Wired to Fire, offer pre-built systems aimed directly at you, the flight simmer. And as demonstrated in my previous video, you can then go on and configure it, change the GPU, the motherboard, the memory, etc. So it suits your personal requirements and your budget. Another point worth noting is that Wired to Fire are not primarily a component supplier. They provide pre-built systems. And I think their participation in a video such as this is commendable and highlights their commitment to the flight sim and gaming community. Anyone UK or Europe based interested in purchasing from Wired to Fire can get a 5% discount using the promo code SIMHANGER, which will be effective through to the end of November. And allow me to preempt the inevitable comments by stating that I am not affiliated with Wired to Fire in any way. They do not sponsor or provide any remuneration to me or the channel. It's simply a good working relationship. I get access to hardware and they get a bit more exposure. It's a win-win deal. Nothing more complicated than that. Um, I hope you found it useful. Dan, to Wired to Fire and to yourself, thank you very no much problem. indeed for taking the time uh, to teach the uninitiated, as it were. Um, and to you out there, hope you found it useful and informative. I'll see you all again very soon, and bye for now.